Hello there, how you going? Hope you're having a fantastic day. Today I'm talking about identity and specifically I'm talking about losing your identity and what does that mean and what are the implications of that and how does it feel when you lose your identity and then how do you bring in awareness that you've even lost your identity and then what do you do when you realise that you have and what can you begin to do to begin changing it. So when we lose our identity, what can begin to happen is that we live very much from the head up. It's we become quite automatic. We're just going through a sequence of hours in a day. It, there's no vibrancy. There's no uh, motivation, there's no energy life force, there's no vigor, there's no excitement. When we lose our identity, it's very painful. It, you, when you actually slow down long enough to ask yourself what's going on, you can actually begin to realize that, hey, I am not happy. I'm, I'm lost. I've got this emptiness. Every single human being on this planet, their job is to connect with their true self, their self that they adore and love and unconditionally love. I'm gonna do a bit of a picture which will really illustrate what I'm trying to say. So this, yes, I apologize as it is a stick person. Here we are, lovely stick person. Now, when we lose our identity, we live in the head up, up, that's it. And so when we live in the head up, we overthink, we worry, we often at 3 a.m. thinking and wishing and hoping and it's from the fear, the fear from the past and fear in the future and find it friggin' hard to be in the present moment. And when we lose our identity, it's not a great way to be because what is happening is you're not in the body. And what needs to happen, for us to have a sense of our own identity, we need to have a connection with our heart and also our gut. And all three, the head, the heart and the gut, have to speak to each other. And when we have a head, heart and gut connection, our chances of having a strong identity that is aligned with your own values and really comes from deep inside yourself, you got, you got it going on. There is going to be a lifting of how you're feeling. So if you're listening to this and you're realizing, wow, um, I don't have a strong sense of my identity. You know, I did pre-kids, I used to be in sports teams, I used to catch up with my friends, and I used to have art, and I used to do this, and I used to do this, and that sense of identity, that sense of knowing who I am and what I need to be on the planet to make me happy. What can begin to happen is when you have children, and I see it in here a lot when I'm working with couples, is that we let go our sense of self. We let go the different parts of us that make up our identity. And that's all well and good in the early years, but if we continue that, you will be like some of my clients that sit in my room and they say, I don't know who I am anymore. I've got this emptiness inside of me. I've got this void. It's sometimes this dark cloud that comes in and we can call that depression. You know, I've got this feeling of feeling unsafe. We'll call that anxiety. It doesn't matter what you call any of it, but it's a sense of, I don't know who I am. So if we go back a step, when we're growing up, unless you've been raised by really conscious parents who helped you inhabit your body and helped you really process. So imagine the dog dies. You're five years old. As a little five-year-old meant to process that, it is about being able to yell and cry and talk and, and really go through the processes because we, 
we go through denial and shock when things happen. And the place to get to is acceptance. And in amongst all of it, we can have anger, we can have debriefing, we can have deep sadness, and we're not taught any of this stuff. And so we just put it in a box and we put it away. Because God forbid, if I behave in a certain way, mum or dad or both may withdraw their love and I will not have that happen to me. I do not want to feel rejected. So what happens is a false self is created when we're little. It's, it's like a survival personality. And so we're going along in life and particularly as a young adult, we can start to, well, who am I? I don't know who I am. And unless you're like the 20 year olds that I work with, and which are far and few between, uh, to start getting a strong sense of your true self, not the false self that you created to be loved, uh, that's when then shifts can begin. So what happens in 20s, you're finding a mate, you, you, you perhaps kids, a mortgage, a house and all of that. Then you get into your 30s, late 30s, 40s, and it really starts coming in. I don't know who I am. And it's, it's an identity that you have created around perhaps family, uh, mortgage, house, job. But who, who's the real you? Who's the you that connects inwardly with your energy life force and you've got a strong sense of who you are why you're on the planet, the meaning of your life, and it is not children. Children will leave home. It could be for a certain amount of time, but children do leave home. Uh, it is not your purpose, it's your role, and you, you know, you can argue with me on that one. But to have a strong sense of your identity is being able to inhabit the body, head, heart, and gut, get very clear on what you value, and really start to drop into why are you on this planet in this body at this time what is the meaning what sparks you up and the more you inhabit your body and you start to feel an energy life force a vibration in you of what uplifts you that's when you know you're starting to go on the right path if you are unmotivated if you are exhausted if you're just going through the motions if you're numb, if you've got a lot of anger, it's about peeling that all back. It's about slowing it down. And it's about letting go of what isn't working and then getting aligned to your true self. The self that does not need permission from anybody outside of yourself. The self that gives yourself the power. The self that you know your self-worth is not dependent on another human being. Your self-worth is dependent wholly on what you think of yourself and how you fill your own cup and what meaning that you give to your life and what you're going to do with this life that you have been given. I don't know if that's the right word, but anyway... Um, look, I really get into these long spells, but my point being, I see this so often, whether it be coaching, counselling individuals, or marriage counselling. Losing your identity, it's happened to me, and it is not a great place to be in. But it's making a decision, a decision to live above the line. Above the line is accountability. It's you're a navigator. You're victorious. You are going to do your inner work to be able to come from a place where actually I know who I am. You're not going to stay below the line. When you stay below the line, you're a victim and you're blame, you're attack, you're criticize other people and yourself. So it's being able to have some kindness, some nurturing for yourself and to begin opening this up. And 
this is a fair bit of the work that I do, is for people to find their passion, their meaning, their purpose, their calling, their identity. Anyway, I could rattle on about this all day. I'm very passionate about it, as you can see. But what I will say is what is one action step that you can do today to come closer into yourself and start listening to that inner voice, to that particularly heart and gut. You know that gut feeling when you know? This is where journaling is really helpful, to be able to connect inwardly. But anyway, on that note, I'm gonna love you and leave you. And uh, the power of change is within you. See ya.